Welcome back to the McMahon Group, everybody. I'm Lisa Schneider Cipriano. And I'm Angela Scott. Thanks for joining us today. Do you ever wonder, who am I? Or, yes. <laughs> or why did I do that? Or why did I say what I, why do I say what do I say? Right. I mean, that kind of sounded a little muffled. Sorry, guys, I've been out for a couple days here. <laughs> well, you know what? Joining us today to help us hopefully explain this and figure out who we are is the author of... I am. Uh, of I am, Howard Falco, and he is going to help us discover who we really are. Welcome, Howard. I'm sorry about that. Good that's to okay. see you today. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks so for having me. So do we ever really know who we are? Well, that's up to you. Really? Um, and that's the search, and that's what life is all about, is discovering that. So. But, you know, I think growing up, and I was talking to you about this earlier, when we were teenagers, you think you know it all. Right. You know, and right. then you're in your 20s, you know, graduating from college, and there's a fear of uncertainty and yet excitement, and am I going to succeed or am I going to fail? Then you're kind of finding your way in your 30s, and then by the time you get to your 40s, it's like, oh my gosh, I haven't right. done some X, Y, Z yet, so right. I need to go back and do these things. Right. Oh, I think the challenges in life are what cause us to ask questions and really get more of that discovery and see how much is really in us. So uh, we can you know, okay, so the challenges in life, when I read about these huge CEOs that are making billions of dollars, mm -hmm. a lot of them say they suffered bankruptcy at one point in their life. Or I'm looking at Matt Weinert right now for the Cardinals. Mm -hmm. I mean, none of us would want to be in his position. Mm -hmm. He's right. in a really tough spot right now. Right. So you believe, or, or your book is basically saying, it's these adversities that really help us to figure out who we are? Well, it pushes us to see what we're going to overcome. And when people, we see other people, like you just mentioned, overcome some horrible things or terrible challenges in life and they get through it, it helps us to see that there's more to us than the limits that we have for ourselves, where we think we're only defined in this certain limited way that causes a lot of our suffering. Do you think that how people perceive us to be is what we really are? Well, absolutely not. Really? Um, unless you believe that. If okay. you believe that, that's what you're going to experience. Kind of like perception you're, is reality. That's right. right. You're going to experience that limited reality. But uh, that is not who you are. You are so much more expansive and unlimited than that. And that's really what this book is about, is showing you who you've been, how you've created your whole life up to this point, so that you can then take more power to create it how you want going forward. Mm. So it's about taking a subconscious process and making it more conscious, so that all your energy, thoughts, feelings, and actions can be related to creating something new for yourself. So people out there that are saying, you know, gosh, if I'd lose the 10 pounds, I'd be happy. Mm -hmm. If I got that dream job, I'd be happy. Yeah. Is that really a reality? I mean, we find that those things don't really make us happy. Exactly. It's a reality if you experience it like that until it's not working for you. But the reality is that there's, that there's so much more to you than that. So mm -hmm. I, I think that when we think that way, we're limiting ourselves. Mm -hmm. And to expand those limits is to get through them. And Howard, your story I found particularly interesting in, in your book, I Am. Um, you were 35 years old. You seemingly had it all. Married, mm -hmm. two children. You're in the industry of finance. Right. Yeah, I had no excuse for not being happy. Right. And that's what scared me. Or what I our still culture wasn't, tells us, you, right. you've achieved. Right, yeah, and I still wasn't happy. And that's what frightened me. And that's when I asked these deep questions. Because I thought, maybe it's money. But mm -hmm. then I thought, you know, I have everything that money can't buy. Money wasn't going to do anything else for me. So I was scared. I said, all right, I, I give. Uncle, I want to know what it is that creates our happiness. And, and, and that started the journey. Okay, mm -hmm. now give us some examples of what, what were some of the first steps that you took to start that journey? Well, the first step was the questioning. I earnestly asked a question and then I opened up and I saw how reality is always bringing us our answers. Mm -hmm. Always. I mean, that's what it's designed to do, to help us understand more and to realize that we're going to overcome it all and help us really see, I know this is a big concept, our perfection and that we have always been perfect in each moment. But don't some of us get stuck in that perfection of, I have to be perfect? Yes, that's one of the traps of the mind, saying that I have to, when they don't realize that they already are, because there is no such thing as woulda, coulda, shoulda. There is okay. only what you did, and it was perfect for that moment, because it got you to this moment. Like I told you earlier, it's like, I live carpe diem. I have to, because if I sit there, I, I seize the day, because if I try to look too far ahead, you don't know what's going to happen That's right. tomorrow, but if you can take every moment and live for that moment, then, right. you're, then you're making the best of it. If you're mm -hmm. thinking too much of the future or you're thinking about woulda, coulda, shoulda mm -hmm. in the past, you are stuck in time. And that's where you're not creative. You're only creative in the present moment. Okay. And when you're in that, that's when you can harness most of your power to go out with the thoughts, feelings, and actions that nurture a more fulfilling reality. 
so Lisa, let's take you for example. Lisa, as she mentioned earlier, is suffering breast cancer right mm -hmm. now. So being in the moment, not saying, why did this happen to me? Yeah. Why me? I don't want this. I mean, those yeah. are the feelings that, I think oh, I would sure. be going through. And it's understandable, but that creates resistance and that energy you know, resistance is what keeps things alive in the world. Right, so right. when you come to a state of acceptance, not that you want it for tomorrow, right. but that it is for right now, then you're in the most harmonious state with your mind, body, and soul to really generate the energy that aids in your healing. Hence the emotions you're talking about and how we can right. gain the most from our emotions because they can either make you or break you. Right, well it leads to a more peaceful state of mind which is almost a non-emotional state, mm -hmm. which is where your power can come through for the greatest sense of healing. And you accept whatever comes each day, but you're in the most powerful state you can be in, which aids so much in the healing process. But don't we need the emotion of anger? Doesn't it help us in life to be angry about certain things? Doesn't it drive us, propel us forward If you a little think bit? it does, it does. But really, that anger is generating a very negative energy. And the mind wants to make us think that we need anger, but really, I... I ha my experience is it doesn't serve you in a way because it's putting out negative energy into the world mm -hmm. and the world, or the universe is like a giant mirror. Mm -hmm. It's going to reflect it right back to you. Mm -hmm. So in reading your book, Howard, what, what would be one of the first things that I would want to try to not so much change about myself, but maybe kind of look inside of me? Like you said, money doesn't make you happy. Sometimes it helps. You mm -hmm. know, you, you have it all. But what would be the first thing for me to go, why am I still waking up going, I, I'm wanting more and I'm not finding it? Be willing to challenge any thoughts that says you're anything less than perfect in this moment. You will find the false thought that is generating the negative energy, putting you in a disharmonious state of mind. And if you can erase those thoughts, you will be at peace and joy. Oh my gosh, mm -hmm. Howard, thank you so much yeah, for joining yeah. us. Thank you guys. We, you were at Changing Hands Bookstore last night. Yeah, I heard it was me. just fantastic. It was, it was wonderful. Where can we find out more about you and where can we find your book? Uh, you can go, the website for the book is uh, thebookiam.com, www.thebookiam.com. Mm -hmm. And that's where you can find all the information on where to purchase it. And a little bit more, there's a, a video of uh, the book on there that people can learn a little bit more about it. Thank you for joining us. We'll be sure. right back after this, everybody. Howard Falco, the author of I Am. Girls are hit by a really dick post-style.